Hey everybody, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Jim and I've spent the last 40 years farming and logging with draft horses. In this seven part series, I'm going to be covering some of the basic essentials of owning and caring for draft horses. I know there are many different ways of doing things. My goal is to just to show you what has worked well for me and what I wish I had known starting out. So each Friday we'll have a new segment of this series. But stay tuned for, on Mondays and Wednesdays for our normal videos about our everyday life of working with horses. Good morning, everybody. Well, today's video on our Horse Basics series is about hitching up a single horse to shafts. Um, as you can see, Brenda is finishing up brushing Bill for me. I decided I'm going to use Bill today. And uh, we'll harness him up and then go out and hitch him on to, the, to the, my cart that I have. And I'll explain how I do it. There's uh, numerous different ways to do it. And I'll try to um, explain a couple things as to how other people do it. Or even how I would even do it if I had a different situation. So um, let us get harnessed up and... We'll go from there. Get him, Bill. Back. Back up. Back. 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 Up. Back. Up. Okay. I'm not going to talk about harnessing because I did that whole process in another video. And if you missed that, you could go back and check that out. Right. Okay, now we'll throw the bridle on them and head on out and hitch them up. Get back. Oops. Okay, so let me explain a few things. So. We have Bill here, and Bill is a horse that I generally use as a team. So I have his team lines on him, and um, but they're made for teams, so they will not work for a single horse. If you took two team lines, and I explained this a little bit in my, one of the earlier videos about the lines, if you took two team lines and disconnected the short line that's on this buckle and took that right off, then you could use the two lines for a single horse. I have a separate set of single lines. Now these lines were actually, get them out of here. These are actually team lines also. You can tell because they've got the holes in them where those, where this, where this buckle would go for, this, uh, the, for the team lines. But I've kept them just as single lines. So because of that, Get them so they're not tangled up with anything else. I'll snap them into his bit. And then his check line has to be hitched up. And I make sure it's underneath the line that I'm using. Then I come around and hitch the other line on his bit. Why do you make sure it's underneath the line you were using. Because it'd be right in the way. If it's underneath, you don't have control. So that's important. Okay, so let's come look at the cart that we'll be using today. Now, uh, I'd like to show you 
a bunch of implements that is works just perfectly fine with a single horse. Oh my goodness, I just lost, I lost a shoe. Look at this, everybody. I lost a shoe. I was working in the mud yesterday. Let me pick his foot up so people can see. And uh, his hoof still looks fine, which is good. I've lost a few shoes lately. It's, it's time to get them reset. And uh, a lady lost a couple of shoes and I lost the front one on him a little while ago and now I lost that one. But for today, for what we're gonna do, it's fine. He can work without a shoe on. Just, so if you see that, you'll know I noticed that. But you might have noticed it already if you're observing. I should have noticed it now. Usually when I let him out to water, I can hear on the concrete floor, I can hear almost immediately that the shoe is missing. And uh, Brenda watered him this morning. She I must watered him this morning, my fault. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the implements that I use for a single horse. And let's go real quick over to the shed. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but just some of the different things that you actually could use. My manure spreader, which is back in there, um, that's a big, large manure spreader. It's a 100 bushel spreader. Definitely not made for one horse, but there's a lot of spreaders out there that are tiny that would work perfectly fine for one horse. And it could be, it could just be a, a tractor type of spreader with two wheels, and you could use a cart like this. Um, even a big spreader like mine, I actually could use it. But of course you only put on like one skid steer bucket load of manure and that's all he'd be able to handle. But it's still a little much for a single horse, my size spreader. So let's go real quick over the shed and I'll show you a few other things that we do. So during haying season, this is my tether. It's in the shed right now, but this will be pulled out when, it's, when we start haying. And that's a good implement that's very easy to pull. Um, it does have a power takeoff, so it has to be run on my power takeoff cart. And I'll show you that in a second. But that's something that works really good with a single horse. Now here is my, my rake. This is another thing we use quite a bit with a single horse. And this works great. And this can be used with either the cart that we're going to hitch it on today, or I've actually even used it or could use it on my cart that has the motor on that's needed to pull the tether. And uh, this also pulls fairly easy, so one horse can most definitely handle this. My mow machines are in the back there. I've got two of them, and uh, they are set up for two horses, and really that's the way they should be pulled with two horses because it's a six-foot cutter bar. Um, but there are actual mow machines out there that are made for one horse, so you could get like a, a four-foot cutter bar, I believe they are, for a single horse, and uh, a one horse can easily can handle that. I shouldn't say easily because they do pull kind of hard, but still one horse that's in good shape like Bill could easily mow hay with that. So here is my motorized cart that you've probably seen if you've watched many of my videos. This also can be done with a team or a single horse and as you can see we have the power takeoff back there so it can run for the single horse. It can run the tether. That's probably about all that I'd be able to handle with a single horse with a with a motorized cart, just to tether or something simple like that. Maybe there's some other things, but um, it'd have to be pretty simple pulling. So also, there's just hardly any end to what a single horse can do. It's amazing. Here's a roller here that I use for several different things. I use it for rolling my sleigh ride trail, but also for rolling the ground when you're fitting a field for for. Um, new seatings. This can most definitely be used with one horse in a cart. My fancy slave, which is in the shed, I'm not going to show you that right now, but that also is for a single horse. And obviously you've seen plenty of things with sleighs and buggies that a single horse works great on. My large flat wagon, um, I've used a single horse on that quite a bit to pull whatever needs to be pulled just in a the amount of weight that the one horse is comfortable with. Here is a simple stone boat that I have that I use quite often with a single horse. And I actually had Bill on that yesterday. We went out and fed some hay to the cows and it's perfectly fine just using a loose evening. You don't need the cart. Um, today we'll probably hitch onto that and go feed the cows some more with the cart since I'll already be hitched to the cart. So I can use it either way. So this is the cart that I have. This is a homemade cart. This is a cart that I use for a team a single horse or sometimes even the three horses. As a matter of fact, soon I'm going to be putting the three horses on this cart to start some of my plowing with. Um, but that is what we have. We made some fairly heavy duty shafts for it last fall and they're a little bit heavier than I like. I've talked about this before, but they still work great. And uh, there's a lot of carts out there. They're very light with very light shafts. And so 
a lot of people will take their horse and actually back them into it and they'll just pick them up like this one handed no problem at all you can back right in and they the shaft loops will I'll show you in a second they are such kind of rounded in such a way that you can actually just back your horse right up in and the shafts will slide right into those, those loops i don't do it that way for a couple reasons the main reason is this this is just too heavy to be able to handle really easy one-handed like that. So what I have is these type of loops here. Okay. So what I have, I have a regular team harness and it's a D-ring harness, but you, because it's a D-ring really doesn't help me at all in a single horse situation, but uh, that's more for a team. But it's still, it's the same harness. You don't have to have another harness to do this job. So what I've chosen to do is I made a strap up like this, and it's, I'm not sure how long it is. Well, here I do, it's three feet long actually. It's about three feet long. So what I do with that is I just slide it down. Now some, this wouldn't work on all back pads because some of them don't have this, this whole opening here, but this works perfect for me. I can slide it right through there and then down around the D-ring. And then eventually it will go right into here. Now some, like I said, some are actual loops and they'll back their horses right up and slide it right through there so they keep this loop, loop hitched. For myself, I don't do it that way and I'll explain how, I'll, how I do it as I hitch them up. If you have a Western harness, what would you do differently? Like you said that... It'd be no different because you still have a, a type of back pad and as long as you had, with your back pad, you had a, a, a something to slide this type of strap through, it would work perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. And sometimes when I'm going to the single, sometimes I drive them in, sometimes just, just lead them in. Since he's right here, I'm just going to swing around and back him in place. Sometimes I'll have him step over the shafts, but you've got to be very careful with that because with any type of shafts, um, if they were to step on them, they could, with steel, they could bend them. With the wood, they could break them. So um, what I generally do with these is actually back them in. But sometimes if I have a horse that's really good at stepping over the pole, if they're used to it on the with the team and they step over it so nicely, I'll quite often drive them right over the, the chaps and have them step over. But for Bill, we'll back them in for now. Come here. Back, 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 Come here. Come here. It's not a very good backing job, but we got them in. Oh, okay. Bill is usually pretty good, so I'm gonna go right about my work and, and get this job done. Like I said, I don't hitch these yet because what I like to do is actually come over here and I'll actually go down and pick up one side of these shafts. These shafts are rigid, so when you pick up one, the other one comes with it. Anyway. So I pick it up, I kind of put my hip right here to hold it. And snap it into place. And I come back and hitch this. And because all the weight is on this one side, I don't hitch everything up, I just usually do that. And then I walk over here, make sure the tug is on the inside of the shafts, and lift up this other one and hitch it into place. As I'm doing this, I had told you, this is three feet of a, of a strap here. It would be better if it was longer. When you have a longer handle here, you can have more leverage to put this into place and you can put it through the loop a lot easier. So that's what I do with that. Now he is a little bit too far ahead. So I will snap this in. This is what holds things back. So when you're holding back a load, this is necessary to go to the britchin to help hold things back. So he's too far ahead, so I'm gonna have to hold this and back him up. I gotta be careful, because if he backs up, this strap will actually hold it, and the whole cart will go backwards. Back. Uh, why don't you back him up, Brenda, so I can pick up on this. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay, that's not working the best. So what I'm gonna do, I could change things around, but there's a cement curb over here, so I'm just gonna keep backing them up. And he'll hit the cement curb, and then he'll the cart will stop, 
and he will back up. I hope. Oh, yeah, that's better. So it slid back. So now what I'll do is I'll get my lines and I'm doing this because I got to hitch the tugs now. So I want to make sure he doesn't go ahead before we're all hitched up. I don't expect he will, but I'm still gonna have my lines in my hands and probably throw them on the cart or, or I guess I'll just do it just like this. They're right in my hands. So in case he was do something stupid, I would be able to grab them and stop them. Now, if you are a beginner, which is kind of what we're talking to mostly to people about people with what we're kind of putting these videos towards, what I would suggest is actually tie them to the wall or wherever you tie them and actually bring the car up to them. That's a great way to do it. You just, and it, you get the horse used to it. You kind of slowly slide the cart past his butt and slide it right on up through. And then it's easy to hitch that way. So if they have um, the loops, instead of the you making the loop, mm -hmm. you would just slide. If the car them. is light and it's easy to handle, yes, you might be able to slide the chaps right through the loops as you come into there. So as you can see, you need to know which link to put it in. A lot of tugs will have the heel chains hitched to the tugs, but it's still the same thing. You need to know which link to use. And as you can see also, this is very loose, but it's because we backed him up and got everything tight. As soon as he pulls ahead, these will become tight. How do you know which chain to put it on? Experience. You just have to experiment and see which works best for you with your cart and with your horse. Look. Like the further it, out, it does what? Well, well, you don't deal with that in this situation. What you want is a snug fit, but you don't want you don't want your your the tighter you go, the more these shafts will go up in the air, and you want these shafts about at this height. Now it's going to be actually a little lower as soon as he pulls ahead. Come here a little bit. Come here a little bit. Oh, there again. This strap here really holds this from going back which is okay, but you want your, your shafts about at the point of the collar here where, where um, you know, you don't want them sticking way out here, but you don't want them back here too far because they'll get caught in the collar or have the potential of getting caught in the collar when they're turning. <sighs> Trying to think what else I can explain. Um, and I've said this before in this particular car, I know that these, the way this is set up with these shafts, these shafts, work good on them, fit good on them, but there should be a bend on this shaft so that the car isn't tipped back so much. Sometimes it really shows being tipped back. Like right now, it really looks like it's pointing backwards, but after after they tighten up, it's not in a, at all that bad. So I think we'll go and uh, grab, a, if you could grab a bale of hay, Brenda, and your corn, we'll go hitch onto the, the sled and go out and feed the cows. So we'll hitch onto the stone boat and I've just got a chain here that we're gonna hitch on the cart. Uh, I wanna show you a kind of a neat little thing. Um, I've never used it yet actually, but a friend of mine made this. It's made out of fancy high strength um, rope. And what it is, it's kind of like a clevis. And uh, so it's got this loop here and you slide it over there. Then you have a clevis. And this is supposed to have enough strength to pick up one or maybe even two excavators. I think it's like 20,000 pounds of lift strength, which is to me very hard to believe it would lift up that much. But um, I'm gonna, it, it could be used as a clevis. And in a situation like right here, I have a, get me down here close, Brenda. I have like any other hitch on a car, I have just a ring there where, where normally you would drop a, a pin through. Well, I wanna hitch this onto the stone boat and I can't get the chain that I have I am not able to get either hook through that ring, of course. So I need a clevis. So I'm taking this little thing right here and opening it up and sliding it right down through the hole like that. Sliding it, connect it back together like that. That can't come undone? Just like that, boom, I got a clevis. A bigger hole to put a chain through to hold that. And supposedly it's supposed to handle whatever, whatever um, we have to <laughs> to deal with. I'm a little bit concerned because I think it would cut that rope, but um, he wanted me to try it, so I'm going to try it and see what happens. Thanks, Jerry. So, yes. 
So all I'm gonna do is run this around like that. And this link, this, this side will go right in. So we'll hitch it right there. And throw the leftover chain in the back. And we're good to go. So you want to ride back there, Brenda? Or you want to ride in the cart? Whatever you want me to. Okay, it doesn't matter. Why don't you ride right back there? That way you can jump off and get the gate for me. Okay. So we're going to... We're gonna just run this out to the cows. We put the cows out yesterday and there's a little bit of grass coming, but not enough uh, to keep them all that they need for feed. So we're gonna be feeding them every day also. Caps up, caps up. Okay, so we have a little bit of corn and a little bit of hay. So I'm gonna throw the hay around. The cows are right over there. I thought maybe they'd run right up and they probably will eventually, but um, just uh, we have a spot here that's really high and dry. That's where we chose to put them out in this pasture. Brenda's going over to see if they'll call her over with corn. Brenda's tossing a bunch of corn around. Of course, it'd be a lot better if we had a place to put it. Maybe if we put some more on the rocks there. Some of this corn is kind of the bottom of the barrel, so we get a lot of kernels in it. And, and uh, by putting on the rock like that, maybe they'll come eat more of it. Us. Oh, Brenda's practicing her balancing as we go along. As usual, Bill's is ready to go fast. He loves to run. I'd say she's doing pretty good. Oh. Well, we made it back all right. Um, I, this kind of brings me back to some memories I have of growing up and, and having some horse rides and situations when I was younger. When I was about nine or 10 years old, I was given a horse for my birthday. I say horse, it was a blind pony. And uh, he, I guess he's just blind in one eye, but anyways. I would spend hours and hours with that horse. And I remember one time having a light sulky, like a racing sulky that I would hitch that horse up to. And we'd go out through the woods on this trail. And I remember one time going pretty, probably it was about as fast as we could handle. And maybe a little too fast because I was going around this corner and I flipped that little sulky right over. And I went flying and surprisingly enough, as I think back, I hollered ho and he stopped. And I went sailing off the cart and, and he stayed right there till I righted it back up again and off we went again. He was, he was such a good horse. I remember, I mean, I was very young, nine or 10, or maybe 11, 12. I, I had him for quite a few years. And there was a newspaper called the Grit Paper. Um, it was a national paper, I guess, but it just came out once a week. And I delivered these papers in my neighborhood 
my neighborhood, meaning I bet I went as far as uh, four or five miles to my furthest customer. And I would deliver that paper while riding this horse called Mickey. And so it was quite a good memory of a, of a horse from years ago. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this um, video. You guys have a great day.